In the last few years, unaccountable puzzling events have been taking place on the outskirts of Milan in Italy. Unidentified aircraft hover just in front of the windows of an anonymous house. The phenomenon keeps reoccurring with a high frequency. A young man films them with his camera, producing UFO footage absolutely unique in history. The image quality, the length of the footage and the different types of objects astonish the experts. What is happening? Who are the mysterious visitors? An extraordinary event that stimulates the interest of experts all over the world. A new enigma to solve. The Urzi case, a mystery in the skies of Italy. It is certainly not very common for people to have the extraordinary experience of spotting and filming a UFO. Even less frequent are those who can do it repeatedly. Antonio Urzi is one of them. The number of objects here sighted is very large, having collected almost a hundred films. Also, it is not just the amount of evidence that makes this case unique in its genre. There is also the unusual closeness of the aircraft, the impressive high quality of the images, and the appearance of multi-shaped UFOs. I've been shooting many types of objects, from flying saucers with metal surfaces to spheres, tubular objects, as well as many other types already sighted all over the world. Antonio got his first camera in August 2003. It was an old analog Video 8 camcorder, good enough to catch the mysterious visitors on tape. Actually, Antonio has been sighting UFOs since he was a child, but only that year he decided to capture them. The first objects he filmed were well-known spheres of light, sighted all over the world and also in space. But soon afterwards, more interesting objects started to appear, like this extraordinary shiny cigar-shaped UFO captured in daylight. Film that resembles other sightings in Italy and abroad. Another well-known type of unidentified objects are the triangular crafts. They became famous throughout the world after the large number of sightings that occurred in Belgium in 1989. As soon as Antonio got his camera, they started appearing almost immediately. In fact, the first footage dates back to October 2003 and it's completely identical to the craft shot in Belgium. Afterwards, Antonio caught them again, filming other videos of very high interest. Where do these objects come from? At that time, the Belgian army declared that they did not exclude the extraterrestrial hypothesis. This statement caused a worldwide sensation. The triangular UFO was chased by fighter planes, but they could do nothing as the unidentified aircraft passed from 280 to 1,700 kilometers an hour in just one second. Such an increase in speed would kill any pilot because human beings can only tolerate acceleration five times less than that. The extraordinary nature of Ötzi's experience was evident from the first series of videos, but this was just the beginning. In the following months, the quality of his films improved remarkably. Since 2004, namely from June, I have been sighting the same metallic objects that I used to see when I was a child. The fact occurred on the 4th of June 2004. The UFO was very close, definitely metallic. They seldomly come so close to a camcorder. The filmed sequence shows a light sphere circling around the flying saucer. According to the experts, it might be a remotely operated test probe, a rather common element in UFO sightings. According to analysts, the hull should be at least 7 to 9 meters across. Unfortunately, the lack of reference points makes it difficult to calculate the exact dimensions. Dall'estate del 2003, dal momento in cui ha questa videocamera e inizia a filmare, 
In summer 2003, when I bought the camera and started filming, I did not mean to show my films, as they were meant for my personal records. When these objects appeared so close to me with their metallic surfaces, my only intention was to catch their details. I didn't care at all about filming the surroundings. It has also to be considered that the position where Antonio films is not very comfortable. Most of the filming is from the small windows on the roof of the small loft where he lives with his fiancée, Simona. The sloped windows are pivoted in the middle and Antonio has worked out a solution to fix the shutters. Moreover, from his small window, he has got a limited view over the sky. So it seems incredible that UFOs may literally pose, making a sort of performance, allowing him to film. However, when an object appears to Antonio all of a sudden, as if it were there for him, he gets so concerned about filming that he just holds the shutters with his own hand. The position makes filming even more difficult. Sometimes, Antonio has got enough time to go to Simona's grandmother's flat, where he can film more comfortably from a small balcony. Meanwhile, the visitors come back for him. It was about 7.30 a.m. when a bronze-like metallic object appeared. There was an unusual silence while Antonio was filming the strange movements of the disc. It's remarkable when the hull tilts so that the bottom clearly mirrors the sun. This phenomenon happened again during the same month. In the new extraordinary video, the object seems to be a cross among the sightings of the American George Adamski, the Swiss Billy Meyer, and the Hispano-American Paul Vila. Unlike previously, in this footage, there are clouds in the sky, so that one can better appreciate the motion of the craft. The video has also a further reference point, the window frame. At the end, the disc went out of sight, and when Utzi zoomed out, you can see the small portion of sky where the object revealed itself. Analyzing the frames of this exceptional footage, on the side of the shiny craft, you can notice some dark round areas similar to portholes. Filmed UFO evidence has hardly ever been that sharp. 20 days later, the big metallic disks made themselves evident. The maneuvers of the object were like the previous videos, but after a few seconds, it disappeared. Utsi zoomed out and the window was visible again. This time, Antonio had a surprise. As soon as the disc reappeared, it was totally different from before. The footage remained out of focus for a long time, but because of the clouds, the fluctuations of the saucer became clearer. Afterwards, the second UFO disappeared too. A few months elapsed before the reappearance of objects at close range. It was 40 minutes past midnight when he noticed an object that drew his attention. The disc stood out very clearly in the night sky. At a certain moment, much to his surprise, the object started to repeatedly light up with a particular violet light.
I don't know if this was due to its own light or to a reflection, since you primarily notice the circular shape of the object and this light rotating around the bottom and the top. An unusual event for UFO footage. About 30 minutes after Antonio zoomed out, and you could see the nearby buildings, an important reference, which also shows the setting where the event took place. The UFO had gone very far, yet it remained visible but blurry. The sighting lasted more than 40 minutes, a long and unusual duration for a UFO shooting. Nine days after, exactly at the same time of the previous video, at 0.40 a.m., another flying object appeared. The shape was different from all the others he had seen till that moment. The color was bronze amber, and it was more visible than the previous night's UFO. You can see an amber-colored object hovering with a very light background due to foggy weather that night. The bottom of the hull reflected the light of the football field below, and the reflection changed according to the movements of the object. Also, when filming at night, Antonio's film stands out for the clear and detailed pictures. It took only a few days before another metallic disc would go so close to Utzi's camera. It happened exactly on the 3rd of December 2004. Depending on its position, it reflected the city lights underneath. Its black color was also original. The aircraft carried on its maneuvers in front of the camera for about five minutes. This footage closed a year of sightings of the greatest importance. At the time, Antonio used to film when he was not at work. So it could have been at night, very late in the evening, in the morning before going to work, or in lunch breaks. The recurrent coincidence of Antonio's spare time with the visitor's appearance is another important element. It suggests that there is an interaction between the phenomenon and the person filming it, an indication of an intelligent and intentional project. After years of filming, I deduce that these objects clearly intend to make sure that their shapes and features are well visible and detailed. I can figure it out by looking at their motion in the air. We are facing an intelligent phenomenon that wants to interact with us. Meanwhile, Antonio met the independent researcher Giuseppe Garofalo and became friends with him. He has been the first person to study Antonio's experience, the first to seriously believe and support him. He asked to analyze the films, even though he was convinced of the authenticity of the videos and of Antonio's experience. I came to the conclusion that they are 100% original and authentic. First of all, the videos have no hint of computer-aided graphic tampering. Moreover, I know very well the background where Antonio films. I know his habits, the instruments and means he uses. Studying such a unique case, borderline with science fiction, cannot entail just footage and instrumental analysis. It is very important to know also the character's life background, the environment where he was brought up, and the testimony of family and friends. Today, Antonio lives in the suburbs of Milan, but he was born and grew up in Loverno. It is in this Tuscan city that his family still lives, his father, his mother, and his brother. Since Antonio was a child, 
He used to call his parents as soon as he sighted strange objects in the sky. I remember his experience started very early. I think he was just five or six years old when he told me he saw these luminous objects. But sometimes you don't pay attention to a child speaking and may just say, all right, okay, okay. However, this event kept occurring again and again over time. He spent a lot of time on the balcony with his eyes fixed on the sky and he used to cry, I've seen a UFO. But we usually didn't pay very much attention. We thought it was the fantasy of a young boy, that's all. The phenomena carried on, and since Antonio kept insisting, the family members also started to become aware of the fact that he really saw strange things. He was on the terrace in the dark, and I heard him calling, Mom, hurry up, come and see. This boy was crying. He was shaken and sweating. Look, look, look. So we have seen those sort of flotillas that now we see on the television. Dad, come out and be quiet, he told me. And I kept silent, even though usually I talk a lot. Uh, so he continued, look up at the sky. So I did it, and he said, be quiet, look over there. You can see those three points moving? I looked at him, then looked up once again, but they had disappeared. Once at home, I thought, man, he must be an extraterrestrial. I know he is my son, but I do not understand what is this strange thing he radiates. This is the house where I was born. This is the balcony where the first sightings occurred when I was seven, eight years old. I remember that it was right between those two cranes on the background where we see a small strip of sea. From that point over there, I started to see the first objects coming up, stopping, going from right to left, spheres of several kinds. They came from the sea and stopped right over here. Antonio's sightings used to happen even when he went out with the whole family. We went to the seaside in Terenia. While we were enjoying ourselves, playing cards or having an ice cream, he looked at the sky all the time. One day he came running towards me saying, Mum, hurry up, come and see what's here. We were in the parking area with a lot of people and they all saw it and, you know, we were quite shocked. I saw a disc above me, very bright, changing colours and spinning around, making very strange revolutions, passing jerkily from left to right. It drew my attention, so I started to cry, getting my parents and the other people's attention. I was about eight years old. The family's testimony could carry on. However, they confirm that Antonio has always been very sensible since he was young, making him somewhat different from those of the same age. With his aptitude to spot mysterious flying objects strangely connected to him. Antonio has always been a peculiar boy. He's always mentioned that he sees things. He's always looked awkward to my eyes. I don't know the reason. I don't know what drives him. He says he feels something inside. And when he feels some presence, he just takes the camera and shoots all the time. People may think he is mad, but these are the facts. The events that Antonio and his family have described are not new for ufology and contact cases. That peculiar sensitiveness, the recurring sightings since an early age, are common elements for other famous contactees. Emerge il fatto che queste persone hanno avuto o avrebbero avuto. The fact comes out that these people have had or might have had similar experiences earlier in their life. Quindi magari o da bambini o anche diciamo in epoca comunque precedente. So it could have happened either when they were children or at an earlier age in which they were not fully aware of what was happening. 
possibly only years after the event they could understand it. All this makes you wonder, since it suggests that this person could have been chosen somehow to live this kind of experience. Anyhow, it is surely important to consider that even Spielberg dealt with these experiences in the TV series Taken. The episodes carried on until the age of about 13. At that time, Antonio started to cultivate other interests, and so the phenomena became less frequent. This phase lasted until he was about 22 to 23 years old, when Antonio met a group of ufologists and extraterrestrial enthusiasts in Loverno. In that moment, his passion of youth for the mysterious visitors was restored. He started experiencing again the events that characterized his youth. Antonio felt to go to Valle Benedetta, an area just outside Loverno. Sometimes he went there on his own, other times he involved other people, starting with his brother, Gabriele, even if not everyone shared Antonio's passion for the phenomenon. When they went to Valle Benedetta, Gabriele used to go too, but he did not take it that seriously. Whereas Antonio did the opposite, he was utterly keen. This is why I've said he was so different from the others, from his schoolmates. The evening went more or less like this. We got there by car, took position, and maybe after about five minutes, one or two lights would manifest above us. They would maybe come up from the hill and start hovering above us, increasing their luminescence. Then, they would slowly change position with irregular movements, impossible for a conventional plane. Unfortunately, nobody thought to bring a video camera or photographic equipment. We haven't thought of bringing camcorders or cameras as it was something really new for us. I mean that we didn't take the time to consider capturing frames in order to show our experience to the others. There was not even the intention to show any material to anyone, because we felt it as a personal experience. During sky watching, many people had the chance to experience at first hand the appearance of those unknown aircrafts that Antonio mentioned, even if not everything was so straightforward. During the period in which there have been many such sightings, I try to involve as many people as possible, like my family and close friends. Unfortunately, though, I have to confess there has been a lot of mockery. Francisco Vansi Consalieri is among those friends that at the time used to see the spectacular fluctuations of unidentified visitors with Antonio. When Antonio told me about these experiences, I immediately believed him as we're very close friends. We have always had a strong bond since we were children, I reckon since we were about five, six years old. I did experience these kind of occurrences with Antonio. I remember in detail at least 15 events. I often went there in winter time during that period between 96 and 97. In inverno, there have been periods in which we went there at least twice a week. Although Antonio used to go even more frequently on his own, I didn't go with him all the time. Fabio Gregori, another friend of Antonio's, lives close to the Valle Benedetta zone. Besides the experiences with Antonio, he has had sightings on his own as well. My personal UFO experience in this area started at the age of seven. One summer afternoon, I was sitting about 100 meters from my house on the stairs of a villa of a friend of mine. I was on my own and when I looked up, I saw a black cigar-shaped object. I immediately thought of an airship, but looking more carefully, I realized it did not really look like that. It had nothing to do with them. That's about it. I told my relatives about this experience. My grandfather told me that they were also around when he was young, and even my great-grandfather would confirm it. The other experience occurred at about 8.45 to 8.50 p.m. in April 83. 
it was perfectly visible. Also the following experience in 1997, when a silver sphere appeared at 10 minutes to one. The peculiarity of Antonio's experiences is the repeatability and the frequency, two elements not occurring in the other cases of sightings. The experiences that I had in this zone have been totally fortuitous. Actually, following these experiences, I have tried to see another, but I have never. Let's say none has turned up. It was all coincidental. The whole of Tuscany, and in particular the zone of Valle Benedetta, including the hills near Liverno, as stated by Grigori, were not new to these kinds of manifestations. In fact, researchers had already discovered numerous cases. Tuscany has always been a hot region regarding ufological reports. Actually, some people suggest that possibly its geographical position within the peninsula and the Tyrrhenian area may have somehow given it a privileged position compared to other Italian zones regarding UFO sightings. There are other zones like Valle Benedetta. Other areas representing an important sector. Due to the Camp Darby NATO base near the Tombola Pinewood in the district of Pisa. Additionally, also around that area, a local group called ENU is very active. Basically, it was guided by Mario Bonsignori, who actually carried out a series of investigations in the area and introduced these ufological phenomena to the people in the province. Without his inspection activity, these occurrences would never have been published. Valle Benedetta Valle Benedetta up to Castellazio is a zone in which many people during the years from 76 to 83-84, at least as far as I'm concerned, have reported the so-called moving lights. Here they say that people working on it I know of Sister Nino, Nugola, Colle de Montenero, Castellazio Romito, Valle Benedetta Cologno, and Limoncino. All these places are locations where some people, common people like farmers, even if they were not aware of each other, told me of these sightings. The opinions of experts together with those of Utzi's family members and friends, describe a picture of an incredible experience within a real context. History, places and testimonies synchronize to fit these extraordinary episodes into our reality, culminating into Antonio's shocking films.